The Court of Appeal sitting in Abuja has nullified the electoral victory of Caleb Mutfang of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, after stating that he wasn't qualified to run for Plateau State Governor. A three-member panel headed by Justice Frida Williams Daudu, in his judgment Sunday said Mutfang was sponsored by a party without a structure, citing a Plateau State High Court decision which had previously dissolved the leadership of the PDP in the state. Arise correspondent Godfrey Eshemoge as well. Jubilant scenes at the Court of Appeal Abuja as the electoral victory of the winner of the March 18 governorship election at Plato State is upturned. The tribunal decision affirming the election of Caleb Muftwang of the PDP was set aside and the new winner, Nentawe Goshwe, the candidate of the All Progressives Congress, APC, is declared winner of the Plato State governorship polls. The appellate court holds that Muftwang wasn't validly nominated by his party, which the court held lacked structure and also failed to hold valid congresses at the ward and local government levels. This is a post-election matter. Being a post-election matter, it means that the course of action for anyone who is not a member of the PDP starts from the day of the election. I think this is one area that many people do not understand. It, it would have been a pre-election matter for aspirants or members of the PDP. But any other candidate from any other uh, party will wait until the election. Then what will qualify him is the fact that he has contested and he says PDP was not qualified to contest. And what made PDP not qualified to contest? The court said they have been found to have disobeyed serially series of judgments of Plateau State uh, High Court and the Court of Appeal. The other judgments were to the effect that PDP, you don't have a structure. Once you don't have a structure, it means you don't even have a party to even sponsor a candidate. However, the PDP insists the court was wrong to obtain the electoral victory of Muftwang and says it plans to appeal the judgment at the apex court. Assuming without conceding that there was no structure, you cannot put the cart before the horse. In paragraph 4A of uh, the appellant's, appellant's reply to second respondent's reply to the petition, they said that the nomination and the sponsorship of the second respondent as the governor of Plateau State is invalid by reason of those court orders. So before you apply the effect of the court orders, you first of all satisfy the court that the issue of nomination is well domiciled in the court, that they have jurisdiction. If they lack jurisdiction to venture into nomination, the effect of the orders, including structure, will, cannot be had by the court. And that is our position. The PDP is now hoping the Supreme Court will set aside the Court of Appeal decision and affirm the tribunal decision which had earlier upheld the party as a rightful winner of the March 18 governorship election. Godfrey Eshamoge, Arise News. Joining us now on the morning show as we look at the victory of the All Progressive Congress of Plateau State at the Appeal Court is Honorable Yusuf Gaji. The lawmaker representing Panshin Kanam Kanke constituency of Plateau State at the National Assembly. Thank you very much for joining us, Honorable Yusuf Gaji. Good morning. Thank you and good morning, Ruben. Thank you and good morning, Rufai. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you. Well, Honorable Gaji, did the ruling of the Court of Appeal come to you and your party, PDP, in Plateau State as a surprise? Considering the fact that before now... My party. My party. Yes. Are you not of PDP? My party is not PDP. APC. Oh, APC. you are of APC? I'm from APC. Oh, you are from APC. I thought yes. you were from uh, uh, the People's yes. Democratic Party. Okay. But did it come to you as a surprise? Uh, considering the fact that uh, before now, the same Court of Appeal had sacked other lawmak uh, lawmakers from the PDP. Uh, Senator Simon uh, Nwantkom, the Senate Minority Leader, Honorable uh, Benila, and others. You know, Honorable Benila representing uh, Langtang, and then the Honorable representing uh, uh, Just North, Ambassa, uh, Federal Constituency, and others. Uh, so did it come to you as a surprise? Because the argument 
General by the Court of Appeal, is that the PDP in going to the 2023 election in, uh, uh, in, uh, in Plateau State had no structure. And Justice uh, Williams out who also argued what? that, look, the Court of Appeal can inquire into both pre-election and post-election matters. But did it come to you as a surprise that the governor himself will be removed? Not at all. Not at all. It's not a surprise to me because I think I'm a politician that read Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, being a lawmaker who is familiar with the law. I'm equally a, a politician that reads the Electoral Act, being someone that participated in the 2022 Electoral Act that is in two practice now, and as a politician that read not only the constitution of my party, the APC, I read the constitution of the PDP, and many other political parties. So I, again, having participated in campaigns, I was one of the politicians that alerted the PDP during the campaign flag up of APC in North Central that took place in the headquarters of my constituency, Panshin. The records are there in the archive where I publicly told the PDP, having come in contact of the judgment of the tribunal and the appeal tribunal, in the case of Alkali and Aga in the by-election of Plato in 2022, being that there was a existing ruling that PDP have no structure, I had screamed to alert the PDP that don't go for this election because you don't have a structure. So if the Court of Appeal is affirming a position I have advocated during my campaign, during the campaign of APC and my campaign to be a member of the House of Representatives, why will I be surprised? Okay. So I remember the last time you came here, you had made your argument vociferously, you know, and uh, but another part to it will be the relationship people are now touting. Okay, pre-election and post-election matter. Femi Falado was on TV yesterday and they were saying the difference between your case in Plateau and the case in Lagos is the fact that there was a court ruling in your case prior to now. But a lot of people are also stretching the argument that it was a pre-election matter. What do you say to those people that are stretching the argument? Even the lawyer that represented the PDP, Rufai, that make a statement in Arise News that I just had, that was relying in one of the paragraphs of the case, that APC are talking about nomination and as well as uh, sponsorship. So the appeal court says, even if we did not only talk about nomination, yes, you can say that nomination is a pre-election matter. What about sponsorship? We have mentioned that in, the, in, the, in, in, in our case. So uh, nomination, pre uh, uh, sponsorship is, is a post-election matter. So the appeal court did not only say that our case is a pre-election matter. He says that the matter that the APC approached the tribunal with is both pre-election and post-election matter. But, but and therefore, if it is a post-election matter, the court have the jurisdiction to entertain the matter. The tribunal have jurisdiction. The lower tribunal have the jurisdiction to entertain the matter. So I don't think but, but, uh, but, there is any narrative that PDP but, but, will come to pass. So, 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 so the is... court was very clear yesterday. So, so this is the argument. You know, even in the lower court, in the tribunal affairs, yeah. there was even a video shown of, you know, the Congress that was said, you know, to have been done and all of that. And they're saying this one paint brush at which they're used to sweep other parts in this electoral process, that is quite sad. So these are the arguments the other side are putting forward. They also talked about the fact that, you know, this has affected other senators of the PDP and all of that. And they say it's a grand ploy by your party. That's what they're saying. What would you say about those other counter arguments? It can be a ground plan. Rufai, I can show you video. Nobody is saying that a melodrama was not organized by the PDP. What was being shown on the screen of TV, it was a melodrama as far as I'm concerned. What the order of the lower court was saying in that, at that moment was, Election was conducted in not up to three local, three local government or six in Plateau State. Plateau State have 17 local government. Then the same member of the PDP, a participator in that particular Congress, took PDP to court and said, you cannot conduct 
a, a state congress with a delegate that is produced by only six local government, whereas we have 17 local government. The court now grant an order that no, wait until the legitimacy of the matter is being considered and a later rule that you must have to allow the other local government that there was no congresses to conduct congress so that a comprehensive list of delegates should be produced for the state congresses. It was on the basis of that that what congresses were not completed, local government congresses was not even halfway, and you conducted state congress. So if you display those videos, you cannot convince Nigerians with a part thing that uh, the court did not recognize the, the party itself did not agree with. That is one part. So uh, if, they, if they display that, they know what they are displaying, but go to the root of the matter, you will come to agree with me that there was no Congresses because it wasn't recognized by a competent court of law based on the challenge of uh, Beatrice Kazi, who participated as one of the contestants for the position of the chairmanship of PDP in Plateau State. Well, now, honorable. on the other aspect that, P yes, Look, I would have preferred to hear from a PDP, but it's okay. You are APC. You are just restating what the court said. Justice Freda williams who was very yes. clear. She said, one, the Congress took place, excluded the Congress that the PDP conducted, excluded 12 local government areas. And that the video that was tendered in yes. evidence did not show that, you know, Congress actually took place in compliance with court order. Two, she said that the Look tribunal erred in law by not admitting evidence with regard to qualification, which was upheld by the two other members of the panel, including Justice uh, Okonabang. Three, she argued that pre-election, that the Court of Appeal had ruled that pre-election matters and post-election matters can be considered when qualification is involved. Those are, those are the three major, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, positions by, by that uh, tribunal. And I expect you to defend it, you know, <laughs> with every ounce of energy within you. However, last week, youths in uh, Plateau State went onto the streets to protest that the PDP was being targeted unfairly by the courts and also by the APC government. And that the ambition of the APC uh, government is to create a one-party state. Because as it, as it is, you know, elected PDP persons have been more or less wiped out. I think uh, I forgot to mention earlier on uh, Napoleon Bali of uh, Plateau South, who has also been, uh, 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 you know, uh, whose uh, election has also been overturned by the Court of Appeal. So what do you say to the allegation that what the APC is looking for is to impose a one-party state on Nigeria. And those who make that claim also cite the example of what has happened in Kano, where the N NMPP uh, governor has been uh, uh, removed. And uh, you know the APC uh, candidate, uh, Gamuna, has been declared by the Court of Appeal as uh, the validly elected person. Of course, this matter will still go to the Supreme Court, as uh, Mutfang himself has uh, indicated. But is it the ambition of APC to grab everything and create a one-party state? I disagree with that. I disagree with that accusation. But I cannot, you cannot stop a toothless bulldog from barking so as long as it cannot bite. Our APC is not formed yesterday. It's not formed today. There was APC before 2015. There was election in Nigeria in 2015. There were ruling of the tribunal, high courts, appeal courts, Supreme Court from 2015 against APC till today. Ask the PDP that are accusing the APC of that assertion. What happened when we had an APC ruling government that, were, that there was ruling against APC in Zampara that wiped away all the positions that was won by, 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 by APC in Zampara State? Was that an attempt again by APC itself to wipe out its own structure? For what reason? So it's, you cannot stop a toothless bulldog from barking so as long as it cannot bite. They have the right to postulate that, but Nigerians, 
are quite familiar with the political circumstances surrounding this country. We know what happened in Zampara. We know what happened in Rivers against APC. So there are so many instances that I can give to you where APC lost entire political elected structure of a state. So could you refer to that as an attempt by APC to put together a one-party system? Why We cannot be short-sighted. We cannot forget easily if there are circumstances like that that are hit APC. Heaven did not fall when there was ruling in Zampara State that clear all the positions of the State House of Assembly, House of Representatives, Senate, including the governorship, at the same time. There was no even demonstration. The political system in Nigeria, including Zampara, was not heated like some people are heating that situation in Plato State. So, assuming there is no instance of such judgment against APC, I, can have no, I would have no answer to give you, uh, Ruben. But... With those instances that the court have made judgment against APC, having APC been a ruling party in Nigeria, Buhari was President, Muhammadu Buhari, former president of the Federal Republic, was a president. But nothing happened. It was against the party. We accepted it as law-abiding party. We didn't do anything rather than appealing to the Court of Appeal, going to Supreme Court. At the point of Supreme Court rule, we accepted the judgment of the Supreme Court. So where can you... Sit down and listen to some people saying that APC want to impose a one-party system when in the true sense of the word, it is the judiciary, it is the law. And the case is very clear. The circumstances are very clear. In Plato, does heaven fall when there was a by-election in 2022 between the, 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 the PRP as well as, as, as the APC and PDP that the tribunal declared the PRP candidate the winner? Not heaven did not fall. And, and another thing to this, why are PDP only talking about APC? The judgment of the appeal court does not only affect APC. There are members of the National Assembly that the, 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 the position of the Court of Appeal favor the Labour Party. So they are projecting a narrative as okay. if the entire okay. thing has to do with APC and PDP. No. Okay. In two federal constituencies, Bari Kiladi and, and, and Just East, Riom, uh, two federal constituencies in okay. Plato are won by, 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 by Labour Party candidates. Okay. So it's not a matter of PDP and APC. It is a matter of law. Okay. It is a matter of respecting court order. It is a matter of disrespecting judgment of, okay. the, of, okay. the, court, of the court, high court. So, so, so let's quickly uh, go there. I mean, it's, Elijah Atiko Abaka was part of those that made that narrative, you know. And there's also a right for opposition to say the way they feel. And that's why we're putting that narrative out there, that indeed the APC is well on its part to a one-party state. Secondly, this democracy as a lawmaker that we now have, that is now fast becoming judicial crazy, that the rights of the people are now publicly determined by the judiciary, doesn't it portend anything for you? Because if we say elections are supposed to be the rights of the people, people vote, they vote whoever they want to vote in, the process is now deemed not fair by the judiciary. And the judiciary is the one making decisions about who will govern the lives of people as against the will of the people. So what's the essence of the democracy then? This new era of judicial democracy. Generally speaking, what, what do you say about it? I, I don't belong to those school of thought. As a lawmaker, I know the modus operandi of our own democracy. Rufai, we are practicing presidential democracy where you have the legislature, the executive, and the judiciary. If... You don't allow internal democracy within the political party. How can you practice presidential democracy? APC insulted internal democracy in Zampara. There was a judgment against APC. You allow democratic trinity to come to play. In democracy, where uh, your election is conducted, for instance, as part of the things that APC was challenging in Plato, you cannot recruit a candidate or an aspirant of PDP in the state assembly election to be a returning officer of a local government that election was rigged. So in that circumstance, you don't allow the executive to be the judge on its own matter. That is why we have 
trinity, democratic trinity, three tiers of government. You allow electoral process, people should elect their leaders, but whenever the political platform that serve as a founder pillar to producing democratic leadership did not do the right thing, of course, Judicial crisis, if I may quote you right, will come to play. You allow the other arm of government that is vexed with the responsibility of interpreting the laws of the political parties, the laws of the country, the other, uh, other, 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 other enactment like, like, like the Electoral Act, to interpret whether those political platforms have really complied with the legal framework provided to guide the process of those elections. Until and unless citizens, leaders, who are to conduct the affairs, democratic affairs of political party and the citizen does the right thing. Will you tell me now that because people should elect their leaders, people will go and rig election, people will go and bypass beavers, people will not follow the procedures provided for by the electoral act in election, then that election stand? That is the beauty of democracy. And that is the beauty of having democratic trinity, of having judiciary as the arm of government that is vested with the responsibility of interpreting the law. Unless people don't want democracy, then you will not talk about the judiciary. What we should be talking about is let political party ensure that there is justice and fairness within the party. That is what we call internal democracy within a political party. And in the electoral process, let's equally ensure that the electoral, our election system comply with the provision of our laws, then you cannot blame judiciary if the right thing is done. Unless we do the right thing, judiciary will have to come and interpret the position of the law. And where people err, where people go against the position of the law, definitely you expect what is happening in Nigeria. Assuming this thing is just happening, it has no precedence before. I will say uh, there is a need for us to even reconsider some of the position of the law and, and, and not donate such power to the judiciary. But there is nothing wrong as far as I'm concerned. If there was nothing wrong when I was APC that judiciary gave ruling against my party in a particular state, Rivers and, and, and Zampara, there shouldn't be anything wrong that I am benefiting from that same process that judiciary are giving victory to my own political party. Okay. So to me... It is apt, it is okay. normal for, to serve as a deterrent to the political system so that we do the right thing whenever we are talking about electoral process. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it.